Did that just happen? Did the Leafs really just do that? They come from behind, down 4-1 in the third period, with 10 minutes left. Scored three goals in six minutes. And of course, the overtime winner is Alex Kerfoot. And the Leafs have a 3-1 lead over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now the one thing, job's not done. Because we, we ain't there yet. However, this result is significantly better than what it would have been if you lost this game. Let's try my absolute damnness to break down what the hell just happened in this game. Okay? I will do my best. I'm not sure how it's going to go. I may lose my mind. What am I talking about? Of course I'm going to lose my mind. Because the Leafs just did what happened to them in 2013. You had a three-goal lead. A 4-1 lead to be exact. With 10 minutes left. You blew it. You lost in overtime. And that is exactly how it went down. To the only difference? The only difference it wasn't a Game 7. But I'm very happy it wasn't a game seven or else I would be losing my mind during this. But let's get to this, let's get to this game, shall we? Alright. So let's get to all these goals and get to all the highlights and all that great stuff. So let's pull the stats up here. Alright. Now, first period, the Leafs were terrible. Like flat out. And it was scary because it would have been the what fifth consecutive period of being really bad. Obviously, in the last game, you didn't play a good three periods. You also didn't play a very good overtime. You found a way to win that game. And you played an awful first period in this one. You're down 2 nothing after the first period. Alex Kaloran scores in the power play less than 10 minutes in. And it was a clear penalty. Nobody freaking out. Saying the refs, this refs. I think it was Nylander's like, trip up on uh, Stamkos. Don't like that. Kind of greasy. Um, and you're down one nothing. Then with just over a minute and a half to play... Nice play from Kucherov to get over Sergachev, and he buries it past Samsonov. It is 2-0 Lightning after one period. Shots on goal are 12-5 in favor of the Lightning in the period. They dominate the Leafs in the first, and that is five consecutive periods where the Lightning have really, really badly outplayed the Leafs. And in the second period, Leafs get a, get, get, get a chance in the offensive zone, right? And it's turned over. Right, Ryan O'Reilly picks it up and goes back to the point. Justin Hall, who fires it on. It's tipped home by Nolan Chari. The cookie monster at it again. And then the de deficit's cut in half now. It's 2-1. Great stuff. You know, you're only within one. Lots of hockey to play. Nolan Chari from Justin Hall and Ryan O'Reilly at 4.51 of the second period. And you're right there. Lots of hockey to play. But then six minutes after that, Hedman fires one on and it goes off the skate of Stamkos and in. They regain their two-goal lead. It's 3-1 Lightning. Then Alex Kalorn scores, comes down the half boards and fires it on. I think it was Justin Hall and whoever was tied up with him going to the front of the net. Uh, screen Samsonov, good shot from Kalorn off like both posts and in. And, um, and the Leafs are now down 4-1. Shots on goal in the second period though were 14-7 in favor of the Leafs. Problem was, you lost the period 2-1. And you go into the third period. And I, I'll, be, I'll be straight up and honest with you guys. I was watching the end of the Jays game at 4-1. And I told myself, I'm like, look, hey, if it goes 4-2, we'll, I'll, I'll tune in and see what happens, right? Well, because I don't want to stress myself out watching things get really bad and lose like 6-7-1 or whatever uh, in that game, right? I don't want to witness that nonsense, right? So... I'm watching the game. I see Romano lock down the save. And then I check my phone. I'm like, oh, it's 4-2 now. Okay. Right. And here, and the goal was a beautiful Austin Matthews play. It, uh, TJ Brody to uh, Nylander to Mitch Marner across to Matthews. And he buries it. And it's 4-2 now. Now, while that's happening, I'm like, yeah, whatever. You score a one. It's not a big deal. You're still down two goals. You can't do too much. Only 10 minutes left. Eh, not, nothing crazy. But then... <laughs> then things get really interesting. Puck comes back to the point to Geo, 
And Nylander fires it on. Matthews is going around the back of the net, right? And he comes out to the front, right? As Nylander fires it. And a gorgeous redirection from Austin Matthews in front. His second goal in as many minutes. And the Leafs are within one. It is 4-3. And initially, I gotta be, I'll be straight up. I'm watching the game. And I'm like, I'm, I'm fired up, right? We're within one. But then my Leaf brain does something, right? And it's like, duh. We've seen this so many times before where they bait you in, they lure you in, and then they yoink, they pull it away from you. We've seen it so often. So don't get excited. You can't get too excited because the odds of this team coming back and tying it and winning it in overtime or winning it in regulation or whatever is very slim. However, however, Leafs win the offensive zone faceoff. Puck comes back to the point to Morgan Riley, who kind of banks it off the boards to Mitch Marner. Marner uh, gives it back to him. Or does, it go, does he give it back to him? Uh, yeah, he fires in the middle of the ice. Riley picks it up, fires it on, and it's in the net. And the Leafs have tied it at four. Are you kidding me? The Leafs pulled a 2013 Boston Bruins with being down 4-1 with 10 to go. Matthews first goal at 944, assisted by Marner and Nylander. Matthews at 1229 on the power play from Willie and Geo. Then Morgan Riley at 1604. But uh, assisted by Marner and Ryan O'Reilly, and the Leafs have tied it at four. I'm losing my mind, obviously. But again, the Leafs' mind is like, mm, no, wait, hold on. They'll make this big comeback, and then we're gonna get hurt somehow, right? It's usually the way it works in this in Leaf land, and we go to overtime, and we go to OT, and. Off, of, off a face-off in the offensive zone. Leafs win it. Looks like Nylander's about to walk into this one. And I'm, I'm, I'm standing up. I mean, I'll be, I said I said it for the entire overtime. But um, I'm standing up. And I see Willie get into the slot. I'm like, R- Willie, just shoot the damn puck. And he gets tripped up by Sergachev. Blatantly obvious trip. Not only does the stick trip him up, like half the dude's body trips him up too. So I can't really, <laughs> it's nothing really crazy going on there. But let me let me just get the highlight pack ready for you guys. All right, shall we? Because that's the fun part. Let's be honest here. Um, and that gets the power play. Now, the first unit doesn't get anything going in the power play. Nothing. And maybe, maybe get a shot that misses the net here. And then second unit comes out, less than a minute to play in the over in the uh in the power play. And we're like, yeah, okay, well, let's just see how this goes. Well, <laughs> Kerfo gets a puck down low, fires it back to the point to Mark Giordano. Giordano over to Willie, who uh goes big back to Gio, fires on his tipped in! Alex Kerfoot! Alexander Kerfoot gets the overtime winner! Maple Leaf Square loose in their mind. Kyle Dumas, Jason Spezza going bananas. The Leafs bench going nuts. We thought they did in the last game. They're going even crazier today. I didn't think it was possible. And Alex Kerfoot. We were saying in the videos in the past, due to cement mitts, he can't score. And he scores the overtime winner to complete the comeback. It is remarkable how this game works, isn't it, Leaf fans? The guys that, that that Leafs Nation, whether you're media, whether you're you're just a fan or whatever the case may be, people that you have bashed, people that we have all talked about all year long, Morgan Riley, Alex Kerfoot, guys that, you know, Morgan Riley, that contract is not looking too good. Alex Kerfoot making like three and a half. Oh, God, that's ugly. And then you look at the TJ, you know, you're, th- you're looking back to the trade. It was Nazem Kadri and you get Tyson Berry, who was decent, but you shipped him out pretty quick. Right and and Alex Kerfoot who can't bury anything this year, but Morgan Riley ties it, and Alex Kerfoot gets the overtime winner to put the Leafs up three one. And ladies and gentlemen, this team for the second time for the second time in the Matthews regime, they have a three one series lead. They had it against Montreal, they blew it. This is a very different team, a much better team. But they're right there. And as I mentioned right right off the top, job's not done. Kerfoot on the power play from Nylander 
and Gio at 414 of the overtime frame. Ilya Samsonov, four goals on 31 shots. Uh, Nylander had three assists. Matthews had two goals, had seven shots on net. He was flat out buzzing. Marner had a couple apples. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly continuing to show how incredible of an addition he is. He had two assists in the game. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about. You know, we could talk about uh, the power play. And honestly, if you watch the entire game, you will know the early few power plays the Leafs had, they were terrible. They couldn't get set up. Tampa was doing a really good job of allowing no zone entries. And it was it was ugly, right? And then Matthew scores that one in the third period, the deflection off Nylander's shot. And then the game-winning goal is the power play goal. And what is something we talked about before the series started was discipline. Well, in the third period and in overtime, the Lightning were not disciplined. And the Leafs made them pay. It's crazy. Also... Shout out Matthew Nyes. Pulling the goal, the puck off the goal line. If you didn't see it, check it out. It is as close to being a goal as you can possibly get without it being a goal. And Matthew Nyes, who's right in the blue paint, just picks that puck off the blue, off the off the red line, off the goal line, and keeps it out. Insane stuff. I could sit here and talk about this game all night long. But I got to go because it's 1130 and I'm tired. And I got a Jays video to make as well. Leaf fans, enjoy it. I mean, look, we still have another one to go. You cannot count the Tampa Bay Lightning out. I will still not count Vasilevsky out. I don't care that he's allowed five more goals. To, I don't care. It's Andre Vasilevsky. But Leafs, Leafs Nation... This team is one win away from round two. This is one win away from exercising the demons of the round one stuff. I don't know what else you want to call it. They have three opportunities to do it. But let's be honest. As Leaf fans, what we have witnessed in years past, Thursday, 7 o'clock, Scotiabank Arena, that's the time you end it. You don't allow it to get to game six and go back to Tampa for game six. You do not let that happen. Because God forbid you lose that game. Then you got to play another game seven. And we all don't want that. So, if that's the case, Thursday, 7 p.m., get it done. All right. Now, um, I don't think there's anything anything else to touch on. I know I didn't, I didn't write any stats down because I just came on here and started losing my mind. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Shots on goal in the third period were 12-11 in favor of the Leafs. Overtime were 6-1. Shots on goal for the game were 37-31 30, 30, Leafs uh, overall. And power play-wise, Leafs were 2-4 for four in the power play. Obviously scoring the two big ones in big moments. And they were 1-3. for three. And Leaf fans, listen to this. The Leafs out-hit the Tampa Bay Lightning 46-45. Just going to leave that there. Remarkable stuff, Leaf fans. A lot of positives, a lot of great things. Enjoy the win, enjoy all the highlights, because I will. And you have a few days to do so before our Thursday, where the Leafs come back home to Scotiabank Arena, 7 p.m. puck drop for Game 5, between the Leafs and Lightning, as the Leafs look to, for the first time since 2004, punch their ticket to the second round. I don't care that Boston's going to be there. I just want to get there right now. All right. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, and let's be honest, if you enjoyed the game, smack that like button. I do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. You guys not already comment down below. Thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game, what you like, what you not like from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. The Discord and TikTok links are down there as well. And I will talk to you guys on Jay Station very shortly as they won. I mean, <laughs> it looked like it was going to be the center of my night, but that changed fast. Um, so we'll talk about that very shortly. And as for the Leafs, I'm very hoping that the next time I talk to you guys is at, well, I will talk to you after game five, but I'm hoping it's moving on to round two. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the W today, of course. Talk to you guys then.